What's good, y'all? So this video today, man, I'm actually excited to watch this one because I didn't have a problem with this woman, bro, for the longest time on ESPN. I feel like ESPN going down the drain, and she's part of the reason for it. Stephen A., all them, they, they didn't fire a whole bunch of people. Max Kellerman got fired. Jalen Rose got fired. But unfortunately for her, she did not get fired. Now, don't prey on nobody downfall, but, the, but when you watch ESPN, you see the way she reports. I've been questioning her for a long, long time. And I feel like she's the person that ESPN uses to go to go at athletes when they want to do their dirty work and they want to, you know, take some shots at some athletes. They call Malika. So I found this video. Shout out to uh, Specs Media. Um, I don't know if they're the original people who did the video, but whatever. Shout out to them for posting it. And it's called The Curious Case of Malika Andrews. So I thought that we watch this together and we can break her down piece by piece because I wanted to talk about this, man. Make a video about this a long time ago, but I saw this video and I'm like, I have to watch it. So let's just get right into it. Make sure you like and subscribe. Do all that good stuff for me. Let's get it. It's the 2023 NBA Draft and the ESPN crew is doing their normal coverage on oh. the NBA Draft when the conversation about draft prospect Brandon Miller was brought up. Miller is a 6'9 small forward who played at Alabama and he had a pretty good season there. It was projected that he could end up going in the top three which was justified after the season he had. Now as Brandon Miller was brought up, Malika Andrews, an analyst for ESPN, had this to say about him. Involving a case where his former teammate and another man, they've been indicted for capital murder in the fatal shooting Alabama, has described... Capital murder. Miller. Or her voice, bro. Cooperating her. witness. How is this factoring, if at all, into how teams are evaluating her? Of course, a lot of people are frustrated. Why would Malika Andrews bring this up on this young man's special night? Especially when Brandon Miller wasn't even the main suspect in the case she's talking about. Today, we are going to be looking into Malika Andrews because, believe me, this isn't the first time that she's done something. Look, bro, and he about to talk about this, bro, but like I said, I was watching the, I'm watching her report this because I'm watching the draft. And I'm like, why is she talking about this? First first of all, he wasn't even the main suspect, number one. Number two, he's been cleared by the police in Alabama. I think Tuscaloosa Police or whatever department it was that happened, he's been cleared. He was cleared of any wrongdoing. He was fully cooperated with the police. It was a whole story. That's how I know about this. And I remember researching about it. it I don't understand why this is still being brought up again. Like, but also... If they were gonna, if ESPN was gonna talk about it, they were gonna get Malika to do it. That's most definitely, most definitely, because I feel like Malika Andrews to me, she she's like a, she's like the um, sports version of Oprah Winfrey in, in in a way. I feel like that's a good comparison for her in the sense that anytime a black athlete or black entertainer gets into some type of trouble or a situation that's kind of controversial, they always and and, and they have to go and do an interview or they gotta go and bring somebody in to talk about them. They're always going to bring that. They always have that one black employee on staff that they're going to use to talk about um, the downfall or any type of negative, um, uh, uh, any any way to basically hurt that athlete or that entertainer or that or that celebrity's image. They're going to get another black person to do it. They did it when Amber, uh, not Amber Rose, um, when Megan Thee Stallion got in trouble uh, or, or Megan Thee Stallion supposedly got shot by, allegedly got shot by Tory Lanez. They had the Gale interview. Um, when Dave Chappelle had his incident way back in the day, they called Oprah. I feel like Malika next. And honestly, I feel like Malika just doing most of this because she wants to get into politics or get into, like, you know, um, you know, another lane. I feel like sports are just her stepping stone. But anyways, let's get into it. Thing like this. So let's give this clip some context first. In this right. clip is Malika Andrews talking about Brandon Miller and a case that he was involved in while at Alabama. Now, unlike the other cases we're going to talk about today, I would argue that this was the most popular out of all of them. Miller was arguably the best player in the NCAA while at Alabama, so of course the case got a lot of coverage. Now, in this clip, Malika explained that he was a part of a murder case involving one of his teammates. Now, all she mentions about Miller is that he was linked to it and that he was very cooperative during the investigation, but she misses a lot of context. For one, she almost ignores his entire role in this case altogether. Darius Miles was a player at Alabama who killed a woman named James Harris. Another person named was Michael Lynn Davis, who was also charged for being his accomplice. So right away, let's get it straight. Miller was not charged and he was not even a suspect. Miller's right. involvement in the case was driving Darius Miles to the scene, according to police. However, Miller was oblivious to what was going on. The police said he might have supplied the gun, but sources have also said the gun actually belonged to Miles. Believe what you want to believe, but the bottom line is that Brandon Miller was not and will not be 
be charged for this case. Right. So tell me why Malika Andrews would bring this up as his life was about to change forever. Now, if this was a situation where he fell down the draft and he was going to maybe the 10th or 20th spot, I understand why this gets brought up. However, that was not the case and it was never going to be the case. Brendan Miller was a projected top three pick in this year's draft and he wasn't number three. He would end up getting selected number two by the Charlotte Hornets, which did not surprise me. Victor Wembanyama was going to go number one no matter. <laughs> bro, it's Wembanyama, bro. I mean, bro, he's like the fifth person that I didn't heard with some type of like major platform that in, that in came out and, and said this man's name wrong. It is Wembenyama, bro. It's not that hard to say, bro. If Brandon Miller was involved in this case or he was not. Wemby was easily the best player in this draft and there was nothing that was going to stop him from going one. So Brandon Miller going two was honestly the right decision. So again, for no reason, this case was brought up to ask Woj how this affect his drafts. Do not go to Fab Lettuce. Dang, I don't stock which was funny because again he got drafted not even five minutes later everyone knew he was going to go two or three so why did you think it would even play a factor malika might have hidden agendas but she's not dumb she knows that miller was a top three pick and reports said he was going to go to number two so her bringing this up was not a coincidence it was her doing what she's done for years tear down black men because she doesn't respect them and i'm not just some incel ready to tear down any female in sports i'm someone who has seen her tear down black men for her own reasons multiple times let's go back to to 2022. The Boston Celtics had just gotten rid of Ime Udoka because of a cheating scandal. To replace him, they would bring on interim head coach Joe Mazzullo. Of course, too. this was a prominent topic, so I definitely ESPN this. had to talk about it. However, the way Malika Andrews would cover Joe Mazzullo was very questionable. We remiss not to also mention that Mazzullo was arrested twice at West Virginia, once in 2008 for underage drinking and aggravated assault. He pled guilty, paid a fine, and then again in 2009 for domestic battery after an incident at Morgantown Bar. The domestic battery case never went to trial. It was settled in August of 2009. He paid a $100 fine and court costs, plus had to do 40 hours of community service. Now, that was 13 years ago. He settled and paid both fines. So I don't need to tell you why bringing up an incident from 15 years ago makes no sense, especially when you said it yourself that he would not go to trial. It's been 15 years and it seems like Missoula has become a better man. Yeah, you felt. And also keep in mind, he was replacing, he was already on the Celtics that he was replacing, um, Ime Yudoka because he, because he was doing his horn dog shape, bro. So he was replacing him. Keep in mind, you don't think, so you don't think that a billion dollar uh, company or corporation, whatever, in the Boston Celtics, when E-May got hired and he brought on his guys and picked his assistants, you don't think that a billion dollar company is going to do background checks on their coaches, on every single one of them? You can't just hire some people off the street just because the head coach approves. The team not going to let you just bring in anybody. You think like... I'm assuming Boston did background checks. Boston knew of that incident. They knew it happened 13, 14, 15, whatever years ago. They knew this shouldn't be an impact. And it shouldn't impact at all him coaching. That's why they even, that's why they felt comfortable promoting him to, to, uh, to head coach. And now he's in a permanent role. It's just like, like, I'm just, I, I remember I was watching that live. I'm like, why the fuck are we talking about this right now, bro? Like what? Like, like what type of issue do you like? What type of like secret hatred do you have for black men, bro? Like, like when I see people talking about online, like oh well, it's you know you read the comments and you see people saying oh no, is she is she just being a journalist? But that's that that information is so irrelevant, bro. Like him being a player, like like talk about talk about his contributions to basketball to the game, like him being a player at West Virginia, how he played in the league for a little. I think he played in the league for a little bit, like. Things like that. Like, he's, like, this is, like, like he's not going out for a fucking, um, you know, a, a political seat. He's he's going, he's the basketball coach, bro. Like, he ain't, he ain't going to trial for it. It happened 13 plus years ago. Like, why are we covering this, bro? That's why Malika is just so questionable. Like, I really don't like hating on people. And, and especially because, like, you know, I know ESPN trying to, like, you know, do, like, you know, diversity at the company and all that. You want to have women and people of color and all that. I, I get that, man. But this just shows me, like, to me, this is just one of the cases that like, you can't just let people in because they fit the diversity requirement, bro. Because there's plenty of other black women that you could have got to be doing this that would, that, that, that I feel like have more respect for the athletes. You have Rachel Nichols, who I love. Honestly, I, thought, I think she's a better fit because I think she actually cares about the athletes and she's going to report it, you know, 
she, she's going to be honest, of course, but she's not trying to make them look bad on purpose. You have Maria Taylor, but you, but you, I mean, they let her go. There's just so many people, bro. And it's like, people are going to use this incident to make, to go at, oh, well, you know, she's a woman and this and that. And, you know, y'all don't want women to succeed. It's not about that. I can give, I don't really give a fuck. It's been going down regardless of who, so whether you bring in a woman or a man. Sage Steele is another black woman who worked there. She's fucking suing the company. Bro, it's just a mess, bro. But anyways, let's get back into it, man. I'm talking a lot. Well, it was justified to bring up an old case to talk down on someone. Now, I made a video about this about a year ago and it blew up. And in the comment section, a lot of people were reminding me of other times that Malika has done this exact same thing. So this Joe Mazzula thing wasn't just a one-off because if it was, you could say it was a mistake or bad journalism, but it wasn't. Mind you, I haven't even brought up the fact that she tried to gaslight Stephen A. Smith on national television for blaming women. The reason for this, well, his coverage on this Ime Yudoka situation, which was crazy to say the least. Oh, and she also kicked Kendrick Perkins off the show because he had a different opinion, which again is just something to think about. Oh, but I'm not done. Let's go back a little bit further. Adrian Payne was a former NBA player who didn't oh, really have yeah. a successful career. However, he was a star in college when he played for the Spartans at Michigan State. However, remember, on yep. May 9, 2022, yeah, Adrian overall, Payne was murdered in Orlando, yep. Florida due to being shot. A lot of people showed their support for Payne as he was pretty well liked. While people were planning their tributes and sending their condolences to Payne's family, Malika had other plans. Former Michigan State star Adrian Payne was shot and killed in Orlando, Florida early Monday morning, the Orange County Sheriff's Office said, and, and Payne was the 15th pick by the Atlanta Hawks in 2014, played four seasons in the NBA with multiple teams. In 2018, he was waived by the Magic after he was named in a report by ESPN's Outside the Lines that he'd been involved in an alleged sexual assault at Michigan State in 2010. No charges were filed in that case. I cannot begin to explain why this is messed up. Once again, he wasn't fucking charged. They were literally allegations. Not to mention, that's not why he got waived. In his final season, he played five games and was barely in the rotation. So once again, she brought up an old case with zero relevance. Now let's compare this tribute to another dead person that she talked about. A writer for the Mavericks by the name of Jonathan Charks died and Malika Andrews talked about it on the show in a very different tone. I do want to take a moment to acknowledge Jonathan Charks, an NBA writer for The Ringer who died over the weekend after a battle with a rare form of cancer. And he was just 35 years old. Charks wrote extensively about the Mavericks and we at NBA Today send our heartfelt condolences to his wife, Melissa, and his son Jackson and his entire family. The way she talks about these two people are in very different ways. Now, Charks didn't have anything dirty about him to talk about, but someone that had some allegations towards him was Luke Walton. Luke Walton was hired by the Mavericks as an assistant coach, and of course, ESPN was going to talk about it. Just like Missoula, they had to talk about a coaching hire. In 2019, Luke Walton had been accused of sexual assault to a sports reporter around three years before he joined the Cavs. You would think Malika would have a lot to say about this because it involves sexual assault on a reporter. Well, let's see how she talked about it. Cavaliers, they are hiring Luke Walton as an assistant coach. That's according to ESPN senior insider Adrian Wojnarowski. Walton joins coach J.B. Bickerstaff staff. Whew, say that 10 times fast. After spending the past five plus seasons as head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers and Sacramento Kings, Walton, who was dismissed after a 6-11 and start with the Kings in November, was part of an NBA championship coaching staff with Golden State under Steve Kerr in 2015. Bro. There is a clear-cut difference between how she talks about Luke Walton and how she talks about Joe Missoula. Mind you, these were months apart, so why she decided to have a different attitude with Missoula starts to make sense. And I wish this was all my proof. I wish I could stop the video and let you come to your own conclusion, which would probably not be on Malika's side. But there's another case that I've never talked about involving yet another black man in Jalen Rose. About two months ago, Jalen Rose appeared on NBA Today while giving Malika yeah. Andrews a side hug which during that she told him to get his fingers out her armpits well that would be bad if he did it he didn't actually we have clear-cut proof if we slow down the video we can clearly see five fingers on her arm which i don't know if you've ever hugged anyone but that's a pretty normal thing to do i don't know if she actually had anyone in her armpit some said it was richard jefferson but he's at a pretty far distance for him to do that so i genuinely think she just made it up not to be fair there was a claim that this guy jalen rose fired however this has been proven false boss sports is the one who actually made the tweet 
tweet that Jalen Rose got fired, so right. tread carefully well, with all this. But it is something to think about as she did say that and people like Kwame Brown actually came after her. Like I said, it is very hard to see everything she's done in this video and not think about everything in a different light. On my last video, a lot of people commented the fact that she was allegedly dating some guy named Dave McKinnon who is a writer for ESPN as well. He's the same guy who actually called Russell Westbrook a vampire, believe it or not. Anyways, I can't confirm yep. if this is true, but most people have tried to claim that this shows that she doesn't like black people and only respects white people. Now, in her defense, I'm gonna defend her for a sec because I don't think it is fair to use how someone dates someone as a way of saying, oh, they're racist. I honestly believe that you're allowed to date anyone you want, whether right. they're white, black, Mexican, Asian, it does not matter. Despite me criticizing in her video, I just don't think it's fair to say that her dating a white guy makes her 100% racist. But then again, it's interesting to think that she's allegedly dating the same guy who called Russell Westbrook a vampire. At this point, I feel like some people in the media will truly never change. And I think Malika is one of those people that falls into that category. For years, she has tried to make black people genuinely look bad, whether it's by coincidence or not. Not to mention, it's happened multiple times and it's hard to look at every time she does it once more. But there is one possibility that I don't think we've considered. One that would make a certain company look very, very bad. What if it's not her fault? What if we shouldn't blame Malika Andrews? Maybe she's being sat up by the network. We have proof that ESPN uses a teleprompter, which should not be much of a shock to anyone. Is there a possibility that ESPN is using her to say these things? If ESPN is putting these things on the teleprompter, then it makes them look 10 times worse compared to Malika. But if Malika is saying these things on her own account, well, she is to blame. But I do wonder about this concept of ESPN using a gorgeous female to say the messed up shit that they want to say. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. But I'm going to say this. I That last part, I also thought about that too because um, I know they also, I know they do use a, a teleprompter, but I do know that um, they... ESPN gives their reporters a lot of like free, a lot of free reign to kind of do what they want to do. Stephen A, Malika, uh, Brian Windhorst, they get a lot of free reign to kind of, I'm not gonna say freestyle because they do research and stuff. Now they discredit their job, but they kind of get a lot of free reign to talk about what they want. Free reign to talk about what they want to talk about per se, right? So it could be, like I said before, Either Malika or the heads at ESPN both have no issue saying what they're saying, saying what she, have no have no issue with what she's saying at all. Because if they did, either she would check herself or the or the, or the network would have checked her. So there's no issue. So I definitely point the finger at Malika because it's coming out of her mouth, and I feel like she definitely has some 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 type of choice in what she says and what she, what she's going to say and what she doesn't say if she had a real problem with how these black men were being portrayed in these stories she would probably talk to somebody and say you know what i don't feel comfortable saying these type of things on air and maybe or maybe she's the one even writing it i don't who knows but definitely the the heads of espn are cool with everything and that's a big issue like I said before, I think ESPN, I I think is on is 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 pretty much going down. I think cable TV in general is going down. Most most of the, I think I think honestly the new media now is content creators, it's YouTubers, it's YouTubers, it's it's Twitch streamers. Those are the those are the new that's the new media. So stuff like this, man, it's it's just so fucked up because when you see this type of stuff on TV, I feel like in a sense it's like a reflection of the society in a, in a way. It's a reflection of how people view black men as just you know as almost always being less than so i really hope that the, i hope these type of things can change and that people won't take the bait all the time and just only view what they and only um believe what they see and what they hear and actually do their own type of research you know unfortunately i don't know the majority of people aren't like that but hopefully more people as time continues um will continue to think more for themselves and not necessarily be a follower and just believe everything you see in here but I'm gonna leave it there. Y'all tell me in the comments what y'all think about the video. Do y'all think Malika is has been um, justified in her reports? Do y'all think she's wrong? Y'all let me know what y'all think. I love I would love to hear from y'all. Y'all let me know, and I'm gonna catch y'all in the next one. Peace.